As mayor, I'll call this meeting to order the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Murder, Riley, Snyder, Here, Here. 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 Wilson, Here. Here. Wilson, Here. Here. Uh, another agenda items from the sidelines. I did not receive anything, but we are lucky to have our state rep, Jeff Yark, here with us tonight. Jeff? Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. Mr. Mayor and uh, honorable members of the council, <coughs> I just want to thank you for. Uh, First off, allow, opening up the, uh, the council chambers to allow me to have my listening tour. As, as you well aware, you see me have, you know, at least once or twice a year that I come by. Uh, but uh, be available to residents. I get all through my district. Every community I will stop in at least once in a year. And very often as I continue to move around. So I appreciate you allowing to open up the, your hall uh, an hour early. Let me uh, be available to residents. So I really appreciate that. Chief, welcome. Congratulations Thank on you. your uh, appointment. Uh, as police chief, so is that anything that uh, we can do? And chief, continue your great work also. Thank you. Uh, but uh, you know, again, um, we're available to you also to assist. You know, questions or issues in the past, kind of extending also to the the rest of the where I you know I am available. If there's anything that you need, I always believe in local and state government working better together as a team for our residents. So if there's things I can help with, please. Uh, always feel free to reach out. Uh, just uh, one thing, so I'm, I'm sure a lot of people are hearing about the uh, about the gas tax uh, proposal. Um, in, in my district, I haven't heard a lot of positive support for that. I will just, just share my position is, I actually had road proposals that existed in last session. So my road proposals aren't actually in response to Governor Whitmer. It's, you know, my position is that we have a 2015 roads plan that's not fully implemented. I have a bill that I reintroduced this session to accelerate that. I mean, road funding obviously is a, is a big concern for local government, particularly like Memphis who does roads. But I want to accelerate our, uh, that plan to get to move our road funding up more quickly. And the other issue is, again, uh, want to do a real needs versus wants approach or looking at our budget I think there's a lot of things if we said do we care more about roads or this other issue in the budget I think a lot of times we would pick roads so before we uh, the legislature or the, the governor we we go to the people for more money I think we have a duty to make sure that we're using the money that we've already received the best possible way and then instead of doing this purging of our state budget based on needs and wants uh, before talking about more money so that just kind of wanted to share what my take uh, is on that and so that's Typically, it seems uh, people in the district seem to understand and, for the most part, um, seem to like the proposal that I've been kind of you know, putting out there at this point. A lot of people don't seem like they're yet ready to you know, really support it for the 45 cents. So that's uh, I have a number of other issues for local government that I'll be introducing and I, trying to help you be more efficient. I had one comment on the SAC 51 moment. Uh, from what I'm reading, uh, the uh, smaller cities and townships, and se et cetera, it's, uh, the government wants to prioritize that where most of the money goes to the big cities and so on, and, and roads, heavier use, so on. So, uh, what, of course, I'm concerned is the city of Memphis. It sounds like we'd be at the low end of the token pole and would not receive course, uh, the corresponding increase that might be allocated to Act 51. All right, so it's actually based on, you know, the, the governor's plan is Act 51 would stay the same. So the money that's already going into Act 51 stays the same, it's distributed the way uh, it, it had been previously. So up to, not the 45 cents. So that initial money would, so I'm just kind of walking, you know, would still be distributed that way. Uh, Macomb County, uh, in, for the Macomb County portion of Memphis, I, I won't speak to St. Clair County because I don't represent the St. Clair County portion or the funding in St. Clair County, but I will tell you on the Macomb County side, it's my opinion that Macomb County is a donor county uh, to the out counties, to your more rural northern thumb counties. Uh, we lose about $22 million in road funding that I think if you base, could be, Macomb County has 8.7% of the population and 7% of the money, and we get 7% of the road funding money, so that's about $22 million that Macomb County loses. I'm sorry, I don't have any opinion on St. Clair County because I don't represent St. Clair County, so I haven't looked at the St. Clair County numbers. But, so my, you're thought in the original Act 51, 
uh, I believe Macomb County is a loser in that, is a donor to other areas. Her proposal for that 45 cents, and actually it's not, remember, there's not actually 45 cents of additional money going to roads because a portion of that is going to go into the fund by her proposal and they're going to roll out general fund money and take that back and put that somewhere else in the budget. So let's remember, although with 45 cents more in gas tax, there's not a pure 45 cents of additional spending on roads. Some of that money is actually under her plan going to go out. Now that prioritizing system uh, that happens, I actually, they did give us a map, uh, the governor, when, they, when she proposed it, they provided uh, many of the reps, I think all the reps, got a map of the area. So for example, of what the priority roads are. Uh, would get kind of that new money would go into a separate fund and the separate fund is distributed based on those higher use roads. M19 is a higher use road, you know, they, so they gave us this map showing what they thought were higher use. Uh, I think they put, uh, uh, I forget, well, Armada Ridge, uh, you know, Ridge Road is a higher prior road, M19, uh, I think 33 Mile Road might have been on that. I apologize, I'm trying to look at the map by memory at this point. But yeah, now I will say, when we talk about this urban versus rural, uh, some of the rural counties, like you get into Sheboygan, <laughs> up in you know, Sheboygan, Ottawa, those legislators are not happy because there's now, you know, a lot of those areas, there's not priority roads. There's very few priority roads up there. We're obviously Southeast Michigan, and I consider St. Clair County still part of Southeast Michigan. You know, we have much of the population here, about 46% of the population is in Southeast Michigan. So, yeah, so that's where this whole rural versus urban, but understand that Memphis is still considered part of this area of Southeast Michigan, that there's an understanding that additional, the population's here and there's additional, uh, you know, economic activity down here. So that helped a little bit, I'm sorry if I went long. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but when, I, when I read it, it, it was, she was prioritizing it, and it mm -hmm. sounded like we would not receive the same portion of that increase. It sounded like we would be reduced. Now, the, 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 what what's allocated now, I understand yeah, that would stay the same. But now the increase, the 45 cent, that we would not receive the same how it's, how it's figured uh, on that to our local and major streets. But, right, when you go through the Act 51 formula, it would be based on uh, priority, what's priority streets, but it said M19, as I recall, was a priority. Uh, you know, our Maple Ridge was considered. So just to give you kind of an idea of what was yeah. priorities, I don't remember. I would guess the boardman is, but I'm not. I don't want to say it because I'm. You know, I, I put the map up in my office so we could talk about it. But uh, yeah, it's going to be the priority roads. But even Richmond and you know M19 coming through here would still get that additional funding, uh, which I mean overall helps. It would still help all of us. I mean to get the. But yeah, it, but the Act 51 piece would still be there. Now, the next question that I have then, of how soon would uh, we receive the benefit of that? Of her proposal? Yeah. Well, well it's got to be, well, I mean, yeah, it's got to be a, approved, which I bet. But so are we, are, even what uh, uh, Governor Snyder uh, was approved, I don't know if we're even receiving the benefit of that yet. Is that correct? Or? No, you are. We well, done. the beginning of that. Now, one okay. it was passed in 2015. It didn't take effect to 2017. So there was, though that if you, you didn't see your registration fees and your gas tax didn't go up in 2016, even though it was passed in 2015. Okay. So that sort of causes confusion to people like, where's the 2016 money? There was, it didn't take effect till January 1st, 2017. So, uh, you know, sort of Merry Christmas to me. I got into office January 1st, 2017, and people started seeing the registration fees go up. And I was getting phone calls that said, I didn't do this. <laughs> this was, you know, but it didn't start till that day. So as that additional money comes in on a monthly basis, because you know, people are updating, getting the registrations kind of spread out through the year, the gas tax is going throughout the year. That additional money goes out and your community gets it out, you know, you know it's a monthly basis but uh, you know, started coming in. So the, we're receiving some debt for that now. You, they, you they, are they, receiving, but the other portion of that, there was supposed to be 600 million through, uh, estimated through increased registration and gas tax, part of the 2015 plan. Uh, and I would just say, parts of the, you know, the, the why and how the 2015 was negotiated, I can't comment on because I wasn't in the legislature in 2015. <coughs> I'm just telling you what the law is. So the idea, fundamentally, 600 million was going to be new registrations, you know, the increased registration gas tax, and the 600 million was supposed to come eventually 
from general, the general fund from personal income tax. Not increasing the personal income tax, but by committing a larger and larger portion. So uh, as we go forward, one year we we're gonna go 180 million, the next year it's gonna be 325 million. And in, in, tw in the 2020-2021 budget, pretty hard to say, it's hard to imagine we're already getting close to that, uh, that, that, you know, that decade coming. But in that budget, we were gonna commit 600 million under the 2015 roads plan to roads. So yeah, you're not seeing the full plan because it's not fully implemented. I have introduced a bill, I've reintroduced the same bill that I had last session, which said, look, people want this done now. Let's not wait till 2020, 21 to go to 600 million. Let's do it now. Let's get the money out there now. People want it sooner. Um, and then, you know, let's carry out that part of the plan. And then you'd see the effects of that even sooner. So. That gas tax isn't going anywhere, is it? Well, I understand that, uh, my understanding that no one has introduced, it requires a bill. The, the governor can't actually, Sorry. this is a budget proposal. To do what she wants to do actually is gonna require a bill. Uh, no one's introduced a bill. And, and neither Republicans or Democrats. So there's no actual bill. This is her budget proposal. Um, there's gonna be <coughs> negotiations. Uh, as I said, this at this point, I'm frustrated with two things. A, that Macomb County is a donor county, uh, which I, I'm not excited about giving more money and still losing the 22 million. Also, uh, I don't think people are confident with our state, how they spend money, that they, they question this additional money, whether it got to roads. And uh, so my position is I really think we need to purge the budget. Uh, there's some things in there that, <coughs> that if we go roads or that roads or that will go roads, <laughs> that we need to do that. Show the taxpayers that yes, we purged out the budget. And then if we're at that point, once we purge and we say, oh look, we purged X amount. Um, you know, I said, I'm a fiscal conservative. I don't like talking about tax increases, but fundamentally, I don't think we can talk about asking for more money <coughs> until we've clearly shown that we've done everything we can with the money that we already received. So that's kind of been my, that's my position on it. There's gotta be some of that 57 million, right? Uh, well, you know, a lot of that money, uh, you know, there's various projects. You know, for example, we just had an Auditor General report that got done in Jan this, this January 2019 that questions the rate of the actual return on our investment, a number of economic development tools. So, you know, there's about, you know, I have a bill to move 60 million from the Michigan Strategic uh, Fund, and again, this is just the beginning. 60 million is not going to get us there. This was like, this was like my opening salvo. I like, said, so let's, I'm not, you know, so I put that up as the beginning of the discussion, but we spend $10 million for arts and culture, for example, get yeah, arts and culture is gonna get, 10 million is gonna get it. But if you blow your tire on the way to a museum, you're not enjoying music art that day. I'm saying there's all these little pieces of money. The 10 million isn't gonna get us there. There's 10 million here, there's 40 million for a visitor center for the capital, there's this, there, you know, there's all these little pieces. And until we purge those things and say, look, we, we went through it, we cleansed the budget, you know, based on needs and wants, before you can actually ask for more money. Would they, um, the 45 cents, that wouldn't all go to roads then? Well, I mean. What else would it go to? If it's what, I'm, what I'm saying is that the 45 cents, the entire 45 cents is going into the Michigan uh, Transportation Fund. Uh, and it's 15 cents every six months, it'll go up every six months is, is a proposal. All that money is going into, what's called a new fund, it's like the, so there's the Michigan Transportation Fund, which is where the Act 51 money goes. This is gonna be the, and I probably like the Renew Michigan, or new, you know, I forget what the title of the, the, but it's gonna be a new fund on top of that. All that 45 cents is going in there. But what, what her proposal is, is that there, as I kind of laid out the 2015 roads plan, that every year we're putting more money in from the general fund, her, her proposal is that that 45 cents would go in, the state would stop putting general fund money into the roads fund, pull those millions back out, put that, um, you know, to shore up another part of the budget. That sounds um, like what they did with the lottery. Well, I mean, I, I, I wasn't glancing for the lottery. I thought, you know, all the lottery money does go into the school aid fund. I mean, with the exception of the uh, commissions, uh, paying the administration, all the money does go in the school aid fund. But the general fund didn't put it in then. Well, I'm saying I, I wasn't in Lansing then, so <coughs> literally the one 
how or much went in yeah. directly came. I, I wasn't there then, so I can't comment on if that's, but fundamentally, conceptually, it's kind of the same. Yeah. The money's going into the, that tr transportation fund. The money that was going in there from, that would, would stop happening, and that money would then go elsewhere to other things that she wants to do. Uh, for example, she wants to take um, college funding out of the school aid fund, move that out, give the schools the full school aid fund, and then you know some of this money would then go to fund higher ed separate from the school aid fund. So, you know, my point about that forty-five cents is there's not going to be a forty-five cents increase in investment in your roads. No. There's going to be money backed out to be used elsewhere in the you know elsewhere in the state. So. Replacing some of that forty-five cents to replace what they put in it from the general fund into the road. Yes, that's what we're doing. I, I hope I wasn't confusing. No, no, no I, I, I understand perfectly what they're doing. Um, okay. You know, this is kind of cut and dry, but <clears throat> they couldn't keep like each county what they generate in their forty-five cents. Keep that in the county. Well, that was not her proposal. No, but I mean, could um, that be? Is that feasible or no? Well, I mean, anything that feasible. way your county is up in the top. It's politically feasible. Keep what they raise. Uh, you know, there's two, you know, one, those of us from Macomb County, uh, you know, just have brought this issue up. I have a bill to look at lane miles versus center line miles because in the formula Act 51, they count a, a, a road mile based on center line. So whether it's three lanes, four lanes, two lanes, in the formula, it is considered the same, they said, regardless. I have a bill to look at how many lane miles there are, so if you have, uh, you know, Southeast Michigan, obviously, who has more, you know, if you're up in Ottawa, a lot of roads are two lanes and it's smaller. You go into uh, Warren, Sterling Heights, Clinton Township, uh, you know, really not so much up here, but I mean, you know, are the parts of the county, there's more lanes per mile. Okay, so when you look at that funding, we're, they're calculating the formula the same as if there's not more roads. So I get a bill for that. Uh, Senator Lucido reintroduced his bills that said all the registration stay in the county that it came from, which I think is another good way of trying to, e you know, be equalized uh, to you know fairly distribute this. So we both have bills trying to say, hey, let's be fair about this. You know, I'm not really trying to take. Uh, when I introduced the bill last year, they, they talked to one uh, northern Michigan legislator, and he just point blank said, I know we're winners, but I'm not voting to give up money. You know, it, I mean, fundamentally, the, the northern counties. Our, our winners in Act 51 in Southeast Michigan, including St. Clair County, tends to be, uh, you know, Southeast Michigan tends to be a you know, be a donor. Uh, particularly in Palm County, I don't know about St. Clair because you know, I, I don't, you know, look at their numbers, but generally, so that's, uh, if that helps a little bit in understanding. It, it can be done as, it, you know, legally it can be done, whether or not there's the votes to change it. Mm -hmm. I, uh, you know, if you look at the Macomb County, the interactive map, the roadmap of uh, proposed and ongoing construction right now, if you look at it, um, it's really the uh, northeast corner where we are, Richmond, Armada, there's like no proposed activity in our area at all. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's all down, you know, where you're talking about, you know, uh, that there's, it doesn't look like there's anything on the map, like there's any planned work to be done out here. Yeah, which map are you looking at? Nothing uh, east of Romeo? Huh? There's nothing east of Romeo. Nothing east of Romeo. Yeah, there's nothing I can't north of the, uh, 33 map. mile, I think it was. Oh, which, yeah, was it the, was it the, the, the based on the county? Map? The county's proposed. The, the county's proposed? Yep. Well, I mean, uh, you look at the county proposed, again, that's, uh, if you're looking at how the county is distributing money, that's a, that's a different, different thing. Okay. I mean, I'm just saying the county receives money, uh, you know, from the state. You understand that you're a city, so cities, villages, and counties receive Act 51 money. I know I'm not telling you anything you don't know, but I'm just kind of laying this out for anybody else watching. So counties receive the money for the townships. Townships don't have jurisdiction over their own. So then the county decides where they're going to invest those dollars. So if you're looking at the, the county projects, yeah, yeah they're made. Road projects and map the 2019 road <coughs> projects. Uh, it's from the gis.mcomb.gov.org. Yeah, that's. Like for example, there's plans for you know, uh, you know, like 23 mile road is, is there's a lot of investment on 23 right now. Um, some of those are come from some federal grants. I mean, it depends on where on 23 it is. Some became uh, economic development grants, but there were some pieces that went together for 23. But uh, 
you know, so if you're looking at that, say Northern Macomb, mm -hmm. yeah, it's uh, you know, it's it's based on the county distribution. Okay. Uh, you know, M19. Uh, I think generally, uh, I, I, my experience having been, while I was on the city of Richmond council, I kind of felt like the state did do a fairly decent job regarding M19, except for this microservicing project that didn't go well. That uh, I spent a lot of time reminding you know on MDOT's case to try to resolve the issues. Uh, I don't know that you guys had too much with the microservicing. Um, Ours was pretty good. It's good to hear because there was a big problem with that contractor uh, when they were in the Richmond area. I, I, well, it wasn't a great year either, though, because they had to stop, the weather stopped them. Mm -hmm. They had a really hard time keeping, you know, they didn't have enough people to line the roads to stop oncoming traffic. We had people driving across the street and everything. They just, uh, it could have been done better, but the end result was fine. Yeah. Um, I don't think, um, uh, th that contractor, I think, is not, will not be doing business for the state anymore as my understanding. So I think that's the, they're wrapping up what they do. And that, that was a real push by me on MDOT. Like, we, we can't keep, you know, giving, you know, we can't have a contract bonus. Somebody's not going to do it right because it, it affects the tax dollars, it affects the communities. I know you and I kind of touched on before that at one time Detroit was trying to keep all their gas tax money that's generated in the city. Okay. Where we had the conversation. Is that ever talked about? That you'd like, we would, whatever gas tax is generated here in town, we would keep it? Or a portion of it? In Memphis? All city, every city. I, I don't I don't think that you're, you know, as far as the gas tax portion, because, uh, you know, I think it's more realistic to do registrations, uh, trying to keep that in because it's, it's a little easier to know, okay, this person lives here. You know, but that's more of a county thing, isn't it? it, it well, uh, it may be more, I'm just saying in general, it, you know, I think fundamentally, it, it wouldn't, that money, uh, it's not my bill, but, Fundamentally, it's a little easier to figure out where people live. It's a little with gas tax, a little difficult because you know Memphis has a gas station, Richmond Township doesn't have a gas station, Richmond has a gas station. Um, I think Lennox uh, actually it gets into New Haven. I thought, yeah, no, they do. But what I'm saying is that if you just looked at gas tax, it's a little hard because communities not every community has a gas station. We can it's a little easier to do with registrations because. You can look at well, this person lives in Lenox, this person lives in Memphis, uh, you know, Richmond, and kind of isolate that. And as far as trying to divvy it up by registration, anybody else? Insurance, car insurance. Yeah, I know they're talking about it. The uh, uh, hike. I haven't heard anybody talking about doing any investigation on that. Does Michigan oh, have it? We're the only. Uh, if we're the only no fault state. Why do we have to be the only no-fault state? We're, we're not the only no-fault state. We're the only state that's unlimited, that has the unlimited uh, uh, personal injury protection. And how come? Uh, well, I'd have to ask the legislators that voted for it years ago. I, I'm just saying is that yeah. why, I mean, fundamentally the concept of no-fault was to make sure people get care early and to not litigate fault prior to care. So if you get into a car injury, injury a car accident, and you have a head injury, and you're waiting for to get into a brain injury clinic because you're waiting for your lawsuit to go through to pay it because you know you only want other insurance and there's this you know or the insurance carrier saying well there's a car accident and you have to go against the other person. The idea of no fault is fundamentally. I mean, I think you know we want to avoid the lawsuit. We want to get you into the brain injury clinic or whatever to get the care early so that you have a better outcome. Okay, but there's a lot of problems with our no fault system because there has as issues like anything come to, to be, you need to fix them because society changes and you need to fix the law. There's a lot of those things that didn't get fixed. So right now it's sort of broken. I mean, the reality. No fault is my most frustrating issue uh, because of the fact that uh, when I started, uh, when I started uh, campaigning for this position back in 2016, I didn't start campaigning on no fault. I mean, this was not my main thing uh, when I started off. Uh, but. By the time I was elected, I had heard about it so much. It was like roads and no fault were like my top issues. So January 1st, 2017, when I got into office, I started meeting with the insurance companies and the agents and the, uh, there's a group called CPAM and CAP and the hospital, everybody to try to understand the issue. And I had four bills just on this, trying to deal with no fault. Uh, last session, we were not successful. Um, there were various personalities involved um, in, in how this was dealt with. 
I will say that this session, uh, Speaker Chatfield uh, has assigned, uh, has created a committee that's just on car insurance, specifically. So normally there's, a, there's an insurance committee, which we normally have. There's a committee specifically to car insurance. Uh, Speaker Chatfield has put uh, Speaker Pro Tem Wentworth in charge of it. And just uh, sort of, lay, just so you understand, Lance saying, the Speaker Pro Tem, if people don't know, is like the second in command and leadership in the House of Representatives. So when you put this, when you put your second in command in your leadership team on this, this is a priority issue. I mean, it's you know this like we want this done. So we have a bipartisan committee of Democrats and Republicans trying to work this out on the House side. Um, I don't know where the governor stands on this. Uh, I mean, I think the legislature is going forward. The Senate has an insurance committee to try to do something. I've reintroduced two of my bills so far. Uh, one. Transparency of the MCCA, the Michigan Capital Author Claims Association, because there's some discussion. There's a lot of concerns that are the how they you know on the assumptions is that $220 the appropriate <coughs> amount uh, of what should be collected. So I have a bill on that to open that up so we can get a deeper uh, review of that. I also have a bill to allow you to get out of paying that fee. Right now, if people know, uh, for those people who may not understand, but when you hit $550,000 in your claim. The MCCA pays your insurance company back for the claims. So if you have State Farm or Progressive, once you hit five hundred and fifty thousand and one dollar, the MCCA gives will reimburse State Farm Progressive for the claim. Um, so I have a bill to allow you to get out of that. So you can either pick unlimited, uh, as you said, we're the only state that has unlimited, or you can pick five hundred fifty thousand. Now the new number is going to be five hundred eighty because every year that number goes up. Uh, so it's in July it goes to 580. So I would adjust my bill to 580. As you know, there was a you know this issue of transparency is a problem, and I agree with it. That's why I have a bill trying to push this transparency on how are we getting to that 220. Uh, I would think this is I would think roads and no fault my top two issues that I hear the most about and I spend probably the most time on. I I get it. We need to, I am committed to seeing something done to the extent possible that I can do with, in my office uh, on this issue. It's been a forever issue, but it isn't something that just happened. It's been like a decade of it saying, and this hasn't helped, but nothing's changed. I, I agree, and that's why I'm, you know, I'll tell you, this is, this is, this is, roads we actually put extra money in over the last two years. I, I really pushed hard that we put extra money in for the GF, even though the 2015 road plan didn't require us to do it. I really pushed hard for that, and I pushed hard um, on the on the no fault. I mean, I was talking to the insurance chair, I was talking to leadership, we got to start having hearings, we got to get this done. Uh, and there was over 50 bills sitting in our insurance committee last session that the chair wouldn't take up and actually have hearings on. I said, look, if we don't have hearings, we're never going to get to something that works. Uh, you know, there's 56 people, you know, to pass a bill out of, the out of the House, it takes 56 votes. And so there's 56 people in the legislature that agrees we need reform. There's not 56 that agree on what that reform is going to be. And um, I, I do think that I can't speak to the last 10 years, I can speak to the, the last two years. I, I can't express enough, uh, this, is, this is not political speak. This is literally my most frustrating issue. I, I am a look at the issue, figure it out, let's solve it, let's do what we got to do. Uh, I can't express how much, and, he said, and I'm not even saying I support it. Uh, I've gone beyond supporting. I got bills. I mean, I'm interested in bills that I'm trying to push to fix it. So it, it, that's, you know, I don't want to come back uh, in, in a, you know, by the end of the session and not say we got something done on it. So. Anything else? Thank you very much. Appreciate it. You're welcome anytime. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. City administration, Donna. Yeah, nothing. Bob? Uh, no, this is Justin. Uh, the fire department, <coughs> excuse me, is accepting bids for two pickup trucks that we're going to be decommissioning here. We have a 2009 uh, Chevy 2500 with a snow plow and a 2007 2500 uh, four-wheel drive truck that we're going to be accepting bids on from now until April 26. Uh, sealed bids. Those bills can be dropped off at the city offices at any time or uh, they can contact the fire department as well. That's it. Sir. Thank you. 
Uh, is there any amendments to the agenda tonight? No, I'll take a motion. I'll make a motion to accept the agenda. Support. Bradley? Yes. Schneider? Yes. Sofa? Yes. Stoops? Yes. Wilson? Yes. Zucas? Yes. Murder? Yes. Uh, hopefully you'll have a chance to look over the meeting minutes from March the 19th. If any questions or corrections? <coughs> I'll make a motion to accept the minutes of March 19th, 2019, if you have support. Schneider? Yes. Sofa? Yes. Stoops? Yes. Wilson? Yes. Stoops? Yes. Murder? Yes. Riley? Yes. Uh, approval of March disbursements report of $133,141.58 and electronic wire transfers of $15,010.95. Was there any questions on that? That'll take a motion. I'll make a motion to uh, accept the uh, disbursements and the uh, wire transfers for set amounts. Support. So far. Yes. Stoops. Yes. Wilson. Yes. Stukas. Yes. Murder. Yes. Riley. Yes. Schneider. Yes. <coughs> Can I get a motion to place communication on the file? I'll make that motion. Support. Stoops. Yes. Wilson. Yes. Stukas. Yes. Murder. Yes. Riley. Yes. Schneider. Yes. So far. Yes. So we have a request for a temporary authorization for Sage Creek Winery. Yes. Want to talk about it or? Uh, yeah. Well, she had come in and apparently they put this event on last year. Right, they did. Yep, and everything went well. And all she was asking for was a little bit more space to contain uh, the, the area. Um, everything looked fine. And so I approved it about that. No problem, right? No problem. So what do we need to do, Donna? Just make a motion, a motion. Uh, I'll make a motion to uh, allow the temporary authorization a application for Sage Creek Winery for their uh, their uh, animal adoption event. Court. Wilson. Yes. Zucas. Yes. Murder. Yes. Riley. Yes. Schneider. Yes. Sofa. Yes. Suits. Yes. Administrative memo number 10 of 2018-2019. We need to move some money around for our new truck, uh, some computer work at the police department, and the street lighting contract that we just signed. Do we have any questions? I'll take a motion. Make a motion to approve administrative memo number 10 uh, on, on the adjustments for the fire department, police department, street, street lighting. Support. Zocas? Yes. Murder? Yes. Riley? Yes. Schneider? Yes. Sofa? Yes. Stoops? Yes. Wilson? Yes. All right, moving right along. Uh, Bell River Road reconstruction. Uh, Larry? Yeah, this is uh, uh, just a part of the uh, application that has to be submitted. We have to have a resolution uh, to that effect. So that's, uh, that's what this is. And uh, I'll, I'll make one more comment. When uh, initially last week, our last council meeting, we uh, had that we were going to do the uh, uh, sections, the bad sections, which was in front of my house and north around the curves and so on, which consisted of uh, 2,085 feet. Uh, and uh, um, Phil called me from BMJ stating he thought my estimate was a little bit too high and he thought that we could uh, do 2,500 feet. So he recommended that we take from Maple Street North uh, 2,500 feet, which would encompass all the bad, bad sections of the road. So I said to go ahead with that. So th this resolution is all part of the application and it has to be submitted by uh, April 5th. Any questions on that? Okay. You make a motion? Yes, sir. Okay, I make a motion that we approve the resolution for reconstruction of the Road uh, from Maple Street North for 2,500 feet. Support. Murder? Yes. Riley? Yes. Schneider? Yes. Sofa? Yes. Stoops? Yes. Wilson? Yes. Stoops? Yes. I, I have one further comment. Uh, I understand that we should know by the middle of May. Uh, he, he doesn't have a strong feeling that we'll get it, but you never know. So we'll see. It makes for light work on it. Yeah. Uh, personnel policy for administration and non affiliated employees. And Larry, I know you've been working on this. Let's go ahead. Yeah, uh, the, uh, as I, my cover letter states there that uh, the office staff brought to my attention uh, two issues. And uh, one was on the uh, 
uh, on, on the, uh, it was both for the um, administrative and the non-affiliated employees. One was the probation, uh, which takes uh, six months, and uh, we've been using 90 days, and a lot, of, a lot of things take effect in 90 days, like health insurance and so on. So uh, we're recommending that we change that. The second thing was the sick day states, how it's stated there um, in the uh, uh, policy. It uh, was a little bit ambiguous, so uh, what this does is uh, straighten it out. And so um, I, uh, I've got uh, three here. And the other thing, the issue they wanted to address was that uh, they wanted a uh, employee fringe benefit effective date, so it's, there's no questions that uh, all the employees will understand that, uh, what the fringe benefit is and when its effective date is. So, um, so uh, uh, <coughs> that will make a motion on. Uh, Everybody, Everybody else set on this? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pretty self Okay, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this in, uh, each one and uh, I'll make three motions on it and I'll just do it all over. Yes, sir. And uh, Donna, you don't have to uh, um, huh? mark okay. it because I got it already written yeah. down, okay? Uh, motion to approve the changes to the personnel policy for non affiliated employees, a probation from six months to 90 days, and clarification of the sick time. Support. Riley? Yes. Schneider? Yes. Sofa? Yes. Stoops? Yes. Wilson? Yes. Zukas? Yes. Murder? Yes. Motion to approve the change of personnel policy for administrators, probation for six months to 90 days, and clarification of sick time. Support. Schneider? Yes. Sofa? Yes. Stoops? Yes. Wilson? Yes. Zukas? Yes. Murder? Yes. Riley? Yes. Okay. Motion to approve employee fringe benefits with effective dates as stated. Support. Okay. Sofa? Yes. Stoops? Yes. Wilson? Yes. Zukas? Yes. Murder? Yes. Riley? Yes. Schneider? Yes. Other new business? Uh, the American Legion is the business of the month for the Chamber of Commerce this month, so hopefully we get out to support. Um, I think they have something going on this weekend, actually. Uh, dinner, I think, on Sunday, but it'll, it's on the side, I'm sure. And uh, Parks and Rec, May 4th, is having a mother-son dance, and they're asking people to please purchase their tickets by April 20th. Uh, there will be no tickets sold at the door. Uh, the elementary school is going to have a disabled adults and kids Easter party on April the 14th from 11 to 2, uh, RSVP by May the 10th, and there's a new book up at the Storybook Trail behind the Lions Club, so you can go check that out. That's all I have. Kurt? That's it for me. Larry? Yeah, just one thing. Uh, there, there's a uh, um, church street and mechanic street. There was a pre-construction meeting on uh, Friday the 29th, March 29th. And the uh, start date now is May the 6th, and the finish date is uh, June the 14th. So, yes, update, update on that. And that's all I have. Thank you. Yeah? Huh. Robert? I'm good, thanks. Scott? Yeah. Jason? Uh, I just want to thank Jeff for coming out and giving us all that information. Uh, pretty informative. Appreciate it. And uh, motion to adjourn. Thank you.